Good evening, Fernwood. It's your TV pal, Neil, and it's time for some more Late Night Variety Madness with another episode of Fernwood Tonight. If you're seeing my face for the first time, this is a reaction show where we watch the show together and then afterward we talk about it because talking can be good for you. And if that sounds like it's your bag, then please stick around. Also, if you're a viewer who feels like you have the means to help support the channel, then please check out our Patreon where you can get early access to episodes, monthly updates on what's happening with the channel, and more things in like almost four weeks. So everyone, today we are watching episode 47 from September 6th, 1977. As I mentioned, this season, we're coming to a close in a few weeks. So let's see what happened yesterday. Barth Gimbel opened the show by letting everyone know that they were watching the hottest show in town, but mostly because the air conditioning wasn't working. Then Happy Kind joins the couch to remind us that he was only born with one nostril, and now he's working with folks who have other olfactory issues. Happy demonstrates a device that helps people smell things more clearly. It's got chemicals that amplify any smell. And then he conducts a smell test for Barth and Jerry, who each identify things that smell like chicken or other things. Barth Gimbel sings a song for the comatose Ms. Chain Tiffany. The refrain says that he has slept with thousands of women. Please be one of them. And then Susan Cloud shows up to tell us that she has connected with a guru who in one hour showed her the entirety of the cosmos. And that's everything that we watched yesterday, everyone. So let's move forward. Tonight from Fernwood, Fernwood Tonight, 30 minutes of very remarkable entertainment coming to you almost live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimbel. Tonight, Barth's guest will be Ms. Cara Bishanu, who can hold your attention with her knees. Mr. Vern Taylor, who wants to be free to eat. Ms. Albert Cornwall, with help for the marginally insane. And Happy Kind, the Mercy Maker. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard. And now here's your host and mine, Mr. Bart Gimbel! Thank you very much. Fascinating letters. Wonderful. Thanks for all your support, incidentally. Um, good evening, and welcome again to Firmwood Tonight. I'm Barth Kimball. <laughs> we already applauded. Don't bother doing it again. I'd hate to hear it. <laughs> oh, you're wonderful, folks. Uh, you know, like the joke, the joke says so often, uh, I'm afraid I've got some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news, Jerry Hubbard's still with us. <laughs> Kidding along with Jerry there, and he's a wonderful guy, although he is still with us. Um, the bad news is this. We've been uh, doing some groundwork on our crusade to bring the World Series uh, right here to Fernwood as the ideal neutral field for the annual Fall Classic. Uh, thanks to some public-spirited citizens like, well, there was Ed McPherson down at McPherson's Lumber, uh, where wood is a way of life, incidentally, that's her motto. And they're open Saturday till 6. Uh, we've accumulated some, uh, enough money in our World Series fund to make some long-distance telephone calls. And as it turns out, uh, the commissioner of baseball, Mr. Kuhn, and that's not a slur or anything like that, that's the man's name. Mr. Coon will not allow the World Series to be held in any community that does not already have a Major League Baseball franchise. Now, that's nuts to me. It sounds about as sensible as, as McDonald's saying that, that they won't sell a Big Mac to anyone who doesn't already have one. You know what I'm saying? In other words, the old runaround is what we're talking here. Frankly, it would seem to me that if your city had Big League Baseball in town all summer long, the last thing in the world you'd want would be take up valuable Halloween shopping time in the middle of October. The last thing you'd want is seven more baseball games. That would be ho-hum time in my way of thinking. But I am not Mr. Kuhn, and nobody elected me Commissioner of Baseball. Although nobody really elected him either. I don't, uh, I don't even know who picked him. Is anyone? I guess not. Okay, enough bad news. Here's the good news. We've got a great show tonight. Now let's get right into it. Jerry, come on in here. Jerry Hubbard, ladies and gentlemen.
So no World Series here in Fernwood, huh? Doesn't look like yeah, it. Looks like we struck out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Left holding your bats and uh, balls in a bag with no, no place to go. And uh, what, what you have here, you might be able to get the, uh, there's the Super Bowl coming up. You know, that's a thought. Or maybe you can get, uh, like, an old-timer's day. Absolutely. If we can't get the Super Bowl right here in Fernwood, we could at least uh, maybe make a few bucks. I'm sure we could uh, probably at least uh, organize a situation whereby uh, we could send a bus down to wherever it is, New Orleans, last year. We could maybe do that this year. That could be. It's a good idea, and we could I'm organize more that like and take getting... it off the top. Yeah, that could be. But get a lot of the old-time ball players up here and get them together. If they don't want to play ball, maybe they could get, like, a... The DiMaggio brothers and have a round robin uh, handball tournament or something. That'd be great. That'd yeah. be wonderful. Maybe they could play the Alou brothers or something. Yeah, or Dizzy Dean, his brother, uh, Dizzy Dean. Dizzy oh. and Paul, one of them's dead, but uh, with a handicap, maybe they could uh, make a showing. Yeah, we could have a dead person on each team to kind of balance it out. <laughs> Last night on the program, uh, Susan Cloud was here to tell us about a guru <laughs> that she'd found right here in Fernwood. We assumed that uh, both of us, that he'd be the only guru in Fernwood. But uh, once you let one strange relig religious group uh, come in on you, I guess the rest of them just start coming out of the woodwork. And uh, right, we before are. you know it, they'll have a representative from the Church of the Divine Termite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a place to live, wouldn't you? Anyway, tonight, uh, in the interest of giving equal time to those uh, for whom there is really no explanation, uh, <laughs> we welcome Fernwood's only disciple of Aqua Ching an East Pakistani water meditation cult and exercise program. Here is Kara Bishanu, uh, formerly Arlene Leroy. out in a moment here. She's sporting the dry look right now with a little water on the brain. That's right. I, uh, I assume that is water, although it's uh, been colored for photographic purposes. We colored it for photographic purposes. The reason I start out with some lame puns there is I just don't know what to say about this. I don't really think it belongs in our show, and I'd like well, to know I, how it got on. I, it does take hours of practice there. Now, I would start out with uh, maybe an ice cube. That would be cheating a little bit. Okay. She's going to move that water around. Water on the brain. There it is. Usually when people wear a bathing suit, they're dealing with a lot greater quantity of water. Than, than well, there is a water shortage. I understand she used larger glasses before. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now she's uh, she left the water right there. And people are probably wondering now, what's going to happen to that water? Is it going to be wasted? But we'll have to wait till the end of the, uh, the program to find out. The yeah. I'm so glad that she's the kind of waitress that you could go on the wagon before your drink got there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's not much from where we're sitting right now, but uh, that's all on how you looked at it. It's better. They're back on the head again. It's still on the head. Now, she's never touched it with her hands at all. No. That's kind of amazing. That's a glass glass, too, incidentally, in case that thing broke. Ooh. Could shatter all over our floor here. I don't know if this is like the hula, because every movement has a meaning, or if it's just getting the water up and down and back up. I think it is. You imagine having a fire in, in India and they have the bucket brigade with this wall like that, yeah. Because the place could burn right down. Sounds amazing. I wonder if whiplash is a problem with this kind of thing. Career. Well, that makes more sense. And there goes the water down the road. My next guest has, has some rather disturbing information about the Federal Food and Drug Administration. Please welcome local poet and now secretary of the Fernwood chapter of the Joseph McCarthy Society, a new gig for him, uh, Mr. Vern Taylor. Probably met back in the uh, greenish room. 
He probably watched her get out of shape. Now we'll hear you get out of shape, huh? No, I think he's all right. Uh, Vern, is the Joseph McCarthy Society a national organization? Yes, it is, Barth. One thing I, I think we should clear up first for the viewers that is this the same, not the same McCarthy that used to sit on Edgar Bergen's lap? No. <laughs> this is the one who headed the Senate subcommittee hearings. Oh, I love the other one. That was uh, Charlie, wasn't it? In yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you took the time there to separate the dummies from the real people. <laughs> to spin his head all the way around like he was possessed. <laughs> Great. Uh, Vern, I take it you people are admirers of, of Joseph McCarthy, is that true? Of the principles of which he stood for, not his tactics. Okay, fine, because there's a lot of talk about his tactics. Uh, now let's talk about your discovery. Thank you, Barth. I have here a list of 26 people. Hmm. from the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, which we think FDA. are communists. <laughs> what? Pretty strong talk there. <laughs> and they are conducting an insidious plan to weaken our nation and prime us for a red takeover. Wow, now, now how are they doing this? How are you doing this? They have many methods, like uh, the banning of saccharin. <laughs> it's quite a coincidence that the banning of saccharin came at, a, at the same time as our renewed relations with communist Cuba. <laughs> and we'll have to sugar, and I'm talking about red sugar, my friend. Food for thought, Vern. Sugar that makes our, makes us you lose our teeth, get fat and lethargic, and makes our faces break out, which means we become unattractive to persons of the opposite sex, which means no procreation, which means our population diminishes in number and strength, which means the red hordes can just walk right over us. Mm. Oh, wow. There's a little Diet Pepsi for you here. Maybe the... uh, Is that saccharin? No, no, they took it out. I mean, is this some of the last we got there? We bought those cases. I, know. I don't know. Actually, um, as far as the saccharin goes, I think any moron can see your point. It's uh, perfectly the... clear to me. <laughs> What about the FDA? Uh, what about their ban on preservatives? Is this part of your plan as well? Or their plan? Take preservatives out of your bread and our bread goes stale. Where do we get bread? From wheat. And where does our wheat go? Sold to Russia. Pretty soon we end up buying bread from Russia. Bread that's laced with true serum and baked in microwave ovens. The same microwaves aimed at our American embassy in Moscow to make our diplomats go nuts. <laughs> I'm working up an appetite listening to this. So you, you do not believe that all these chemicals in our food are actually harmful? No, they're not that bad. I say smoke screen. I think he's got a point here. You know, maybe the FDA is trying to discourage us, and maybe they're working on that side by banning all these different color additives. They banned, uh, what, the red dye number two. Right. Why? To make them food less appealing. How would you like to eat a hot dog that was green? <laughs> or who would eat uh, gray licorice? It turns your stomach. <laughs> or what about... Uh, do you imagine what tomato sauce would look out like without that red coloring? No, I think I agree with you. I think they're trying to take the color out of food, make us lose our appetite, start dieting, and get weak and starve. And then the commies, the reds, are going to walk in and waltz right over everything, right? Here, here. here. Not only here, but every place. <laughs> Oklahoma, wherever they make weak. So like an orange, if it's not orange, it's not an orange. Is that what you're saying, Jerry? Not an orange one, anyway. It's like having breakfast with Anita Bryant. By any other name. By any other name. I suppose uh, we could take the bull by the horns here, and we could just take a stand, a very staunch American stand, and, 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 and eat health food. Sure. Health food. <laughs> High-priced stuff sold by those freaks with the ponytails, uh, living communes. <laughs> Don't forget, you are what you eat. One last question. What if those chemicals like saccharin do cause cancer in humans? <laughs> Mr. Kimball, every American must sooner or later ask himself this. Would you rather be sarcogenic or communistic? I say we should show those pinkos in the FDA what we're made of and eat Twinkie for America! <laughs> Get well, those commies into a get those commies into a, a jam that they can't get out of. <laughs> I think as long as it's a free country, I will pass on the Twinkie and um, fine kettle of fish they've gotten us into, huh? <laughs> In the soup. Is no. that what you're thinking of? <laughs> mock you may, mock you may. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. <laughs> Bye. 
Apparently we're back. Um, <laughs> our next guest is someone whose name is familiar to us all in Fernwood. She's helped a lot of people in town with her weekly advice column in the Fernwood Inquiring Gazette, or FIG as we call it. <laughs> She's recently written a book called You Are You, in which she explains her philosophy of life. Would you welcome, please, Miss, guys, Miss, Alberta Cornwall. <laughs> I brought something for each of Whoa, you. Oh, what is all this? little news. No, you know, it's a you. find it's out all about this in just a minute. Really? What's something like this worth? Oh, well. <laughs> you have to try something like there that you go. now. Well, I'll just put it around my neck and hope it goes up in value. <laughs> That's great. I brought my book. Your book? Yes. You Are You. She's written it right here. Picture of her on the back. That's oh. her, and you are her. I am as, me. You as are well you. as you are you. You are you. Um, we're all dying, actually, dying to know um, what is You Are You all about? Well, You Are You is a philosophy that I developed that completely eliminates the need for expensive psychotherapy and drugs. Hmm. Well, I, I think we're all looking for that. that. That's the kind of thing you drive you crazy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Simply stated, You Are You. So if you will believe that you are you, you'll be happy. You know, she's got a point there, and I've sure. been living by that philosophy for a long time. I realize that I'm Jerry, and you're Barth, right? and that makes me happy. See? <laughs> well, now, wait, it doesn't make me, I don't mean happy kind. Uh, I'm not happy kind. Only happy. But I realize he, happy is happy, and I'm Jerry, and that makes me not happy. I don't mean uh, not happy like being unhappy. I mean uh, not happy like happy, and happy is happy. <laughs> <laughs> Alberta, uh, boy, Alberta, how do you how do you apply this philosophy to people with problems, real problems? <laughs> I try to uh, build the person's ego by reminding him of his own uniqueness. So you're really trying to build up each individual's individual ego, and if, if a person feels good about himself, or in my case, great about himself, <laughs> uh, he, has, he has no problems, okay? That's right, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see how this works. Uh, we have some letters here that some people have sent in to us, actually sent in to you at the uh, FIG, and you haven't seen these yet. No. Right? Okay, so this will be right off the top here, and these are some people with problems, and uh, let's see how well it works. First one is from right here in Fermo. In fact, they all are. Okay. This person writes, uh, I can't handle things any longer. My wife has a brain tumor and is cheating on me with another man. <laughs> I have three teenage daughters, and my oldest is pregnant. She talks of selling the baby. I lost my job and cry a lot lately. I've started to ride down winding country roads late at night with my headlights off. I think I'm depressed. What should I do? <laughs> Signed, uh, Dot. Her name is Dot. Well, it's just a dot. <laughs> Maybe it's unsigned. I don't know. Well, I've found that wearing brightly colored shirts relieves depression. <laughs> you see, you are you, right? and wearing a brightly colored shirt makes you a happier you than you, you were before. You're brighter. You are you. I'll be darned. That's some advice, I guess. So all you uh, Fernwoodians out there, if you see a guy speeding down a, a back road, just throw him an orange shirt, okay? <laughs> or a yellow one, yeah, they're nice. But of course, that may add to his depression, having people jump out of the dark and throw on colored t-shirts in his car. <laughs> I know that. Well, until he gets his lights on, he may not even see it coming. No. I just suddenly see a t-shirt draft over his uh, windshield. Oh, uh, you can probably go on all night like that. Fortunately, we have another left. Okay. okay, this one is, uh, oh, this one's done in pencil. I don't know why it has any... Now, you see, here's a perfect example of how people, a lot of them cause their own problems. It's a personality thing. He writes down here, P.S. Read my letter or I'll kill you. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I'll find you. Now that you know, that, he didn't really need that. He should have just given you the chance. And it's a, it's off on the wrong foot already. I'm glad I'm not him. It's direct. It's addressed right to me. It's like, yeah. Um. <laughs> any rate, uh, it goes, dear Alberta. I knew. Right to you. I think I'm hearing things at night. I hear voices that say, "This is God talking." 
I want you to go to Main Street and tell people I've sent you to help them. Then another night she says, I hear a voice saying, this is the devil talking, don't listen to God. Wear a red dress and do wild things with your body. <laughs> then the next night, the next night the voice will say, this is God again. Was that you I saw in a red dress? I don't know what to do. What do you recommend for this person here? I think she should go right out and buy herself something frivolous. <laughs> Just a, a bauble, a token, something like that. And then she should go straight to the beauty parlor and get herself a new hairdo. You think? When she sees how pretty she'll look with the hair like that, no matter who is talking to her, she'll know who she is. She is she. Well, you are you. you are that. She's not going to come after you to kill you with a nice new hairdo and a nice dress on yeah. either. You know how women are about things like that. It's funny, the red dress would almost qualify as an orange shirt, and in this case it didn't do much for her. Maybe she uh, should throw herself at the other gentleman's car. Or run you don't, you don't think uh, she should be put in one of those rooms with the uh, soft walls? <laughs> You'd be surprised what wonders a really good permanent can do. What? You see, you see, in this case, you are you through your hair. But you can be you through what you wear or through what you eat. The most important thing is, you are you. Yeah, it's a good thing we have different looks, too, because if we just identified ourselves by these yous, we wouldn't know who we were, because we have... <laughs> three of us. If I, I am me and I'm the one wearing this, then who are you because you're wearing it too. But you can be you better than I can be you. You see, you are you. Okay. You are you. Well, if you were very self-effacing, you could be where the you and the other person could say, I see you. <laughs> so would not want to call attention to himself. Yeah. Well, another, another nice thing for you, Jerry, is this is elasticized, so when you get a statement like that, you can just knock some sense into yourself. Like, <laughs> It doesn't really hurt. Oh, it smarted when I did it. Um, we'll be right back out of these words. Thank you very much. We're just about out of time here. I gotta thank my guests. I don't have to, but I'd sort of like to. And uh, <laughs> we'll go ladies first. Uh, Alberta, you are you. And you told me during the break, you are hungry. So here. Oh. <laughs> I have one of these. I recommend yeah, the licorice. Just do this one. Okay, I'd like to offer you something to wash it down with, but I'm afraid what you might do with it, you might <laughs> just try to dance all over it and you don't know where those feet have been. <laughs> Of course, referring to the lovely Karoth Bisha Nu, or as we like to call you, Arlene Leroy. Thank you so much for coming by. And in this case, you are not you, you are Nu. <laughs> right, Jerry. Also, uh, of course, I should thank Jerry Hubbard for things like that. It He's was wonderful. nothing, believe me. Yeah. That's right. Uh, also, happy to the earth makers. And last but not least, the wonderful Vern Taylor, who you really make your point come across pretty strong. So, I got time to do a little number on my trunk. You hey, have time to do a little number on your trumpet. You have time to at least hold it. Uh, <laughs> and if we have time for you to play it, uh, we'll find out when we're out of time. Oop, we're out of time. <laughs> Son of a gun, old rats behind. Um, tonight, so we'll see you tomorrow. You can play with the band maybe as they go out. See you tomorrow night, everybody. <laughs> Today was a nice, easygoing episode with Barth complaining that he's having trouble getting the World Series to Fernwood since they don't have a major league baseball presence already. Of course, that's really more of an issue for Barth than anybody else, but that seems to be something that he's got uh, a bone in his craw, so to speak. Then we bring out Kara Bishanu, who does a water balancing act, but under the guise of having been associated with some kind of religious cult. It doesn't really appear to have any cultish content, but that's the context that helps us connect to yesterday's episode when Susan Cloud had her guru talk, at least 
mentioned the guru that she was in touch with. And really, this is just a way of making something that's a little bit odd even weirder, as Jerry and Barth make comments about the act as we go. Then, speaking of weird, we bring out Vernon Taylor, who is here to represent his society that appreciates Joseph McCarthy. Of course, Jerry immediately compares Joseph McCarthy to Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, not compares to, but confuses with. If you're not familiar with those names, Edgar Bergen was a ventriloquist and his dummy was Charlie McCarthy. They were famous through the 50s up until now. If you're not familiar with Joseph McCarthy, he's known for what is called McCarthyism, which was basically rooting out people who might be communists. Things like the Red Scare of the 1950s. He was pretty infamous for that. Speaking as a person who is fairly pink, I think someone who worships Joseph McCarthy probably is a little bit unhinged, but we don't even need to know that he's interested in this to see Vernon Taylor get unhinged. And then we bring out Miss Alberta Cornwall, who seems to be hawking her book, I'm Me, You're You, which appears to me to be mocking self-help books like I'm Okay, You're Okay, which were really popular in the 1970s. Self-help had existed as a genre for many, many decades before this, but that seemed to be a big spark, a big touching point in the culture. I'm Okay, You're Okay. I've never read it, but it does get referred to quite a lot in uh, comedy bits. And that's pretty much where the show ends. Barth thanks the guests, and Vernon doesn't even really get a chance to play a trumpet tune like he often will. He just accompanies the band as they play us out. So that is our episode. And now it's time to address the topic of the week, which is the coming change as this channel turns to dating myself. I mentioned yesterday that we are going to be watching a military-themed show and an anime of course, the military-themed show does take place during a war. I won't tell you more than that at this point because it could be a lot of things based on how vague I'm letting that be. The anime, of course, was rewritten in many ways, as many animes during that period were, actually even later. Many animes or Japanese shows that get brought over to the United States get rewritten for the American audience. I will say that this show has a lot of flair. Another change that will be happening to the shows on this channel is that I will be showing more edited episodes because I'd like to avoid, you know, the copyright dings that I occasionally get, but also because many reaction shows do feature cut episodes. And if you want the full length episodes, you'll need to check out Patreon because that's where they're going to be. So that's happening, please check out Patreon because that's how you're going to get those uncut apps. Everyone, I'm having fun doing this. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions in the comments. Thank you to my top tier Patreon supporters because I believe you know things that other people don't. We will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood. <laughs>